about an impact from a near-Earth object. And there are a lot of things in life that are much more dangerous than that. On the other hand, there are very few things that uh, could in fact wipe out the entire civilization and, and humankind. And this is one of the things on the list. Highly unlikely to happen, but it's probably worth paying attention to. The linear program is the Near-Earth Asteroid Research Program we operate at Lincoln Laboratory. And the idea is to take technology that we've developed for the Air Force, tracking objects in space, and applying that to hunting for near-Earth asteroids. An asteroid is kind of the leftovers from the formation of the solar system. If you look at the solar system, there's a big gap between Jupiter and Mars where there's material that never really formed into a planet. And so there are millions of objects out there in what's called the main asteroid belt. Near-Earth asteroids are a uh, special subclass of asteroids that get disturbed out, probably due to gravitational interactions with the planet Jupiter, and they get pushed into orbits that could bring them fairly close to the Earth. So that doesn't mean impact, but that means within, say, five lunar distances to the Earth, which is uh, in the immediate neighborhood in the, in the scale of the solar system. And we're interested in those because over some time, there are some number of those that will collide with the Earth. Meteor Crater was produced 50,000 years ago when an iron asteroid plummeted to Earth, hitting with explosive force several hundred to perhaps a couple of thousand times more energetic than the bombs that destroyed Hiroshima and Nagasaki. This asteroid was approximately half the size of a football field in diameter, and only a few percent of that object actually survived to litter the landscape with these metal fragments uh, like I have here. We only know of about 170 impact craters on the surface of the Earth. But the impact cratering record on Earth is actually very deceiving. The Earth is a very dynamic planet in terms of geology. There is plate tectonics, there's volcanism, there's erosion. All of these processes have a tendency to erase the signatures of impact events. But if we look at the moon where these processes don't occur, we can actually count 300,000 impact craters the size of meteor crater or larger. That implies the Earth, which is in the same part of the solar system, but a larger body has been hit by over 4 million asteroids and comets. The key in terms of evaluating the future threat of these objects is to locate all of them in space, map out where they are, map out their orbits so that we can predict when in the future they are going to hit the Earth. The data that Linear collects is actually uh, intended to distinguish an asteroid, which is a object that is relatively close by, from something that's in the far star field. And the way we do that is over a period of time we go and we track the stars so we leave them apparently not moving and take a picture. We then come back a half an hour later and we take another picture. And we do that five times in a row. And spread over a couple of hours, the asteroid has a apparent motion. Once an asteroid is discovered, there's still a need for follow-up observations. Having us find it once is not sufficient. Uh, somebody has to provide the observations that allow the uh, Minor Planet Center to calculate an orbit. Every day we receive a lot of observations of asteroids, uh, possibly as many as 15,000 from the Linear Project alone. And 99.9% uh, .9 of those asteroids are absolutely no danger to the Earth at all. So we pick out uh, those that seem most promising, put them on a website called the Near Earth Object Confirmation page uh, in the hope of inspiring more observations, because that is what is needed in order really to calculate the orbits of these objects. This is Desert Moon Observatory, Minor Planet Center number 448. The people who are making the follow-up observations, some of them are professionals, most of them are amateur astronomers. There are a lot of very sophisticated amateur astronomers around the world nowadays with the latest equipment that will allow them immediately to get onto these objects 
and measure the positions and report them to us. We're going currently to 2005 CL, which is a potentially hazardous asteroid. If something is going to hit us, for sure, then that has a probability of one. If the probability is zero, it's not going to hit us. We know the laws of motion. We know that asteroids are going around the sun, basically, according to Newton's principles. But we cannot predict exactly, based on limited amount of information, that there is or is not going to be an impact. It will show up with a small probability, like one in a million, one in a thousand sometimes. And uh, we recently had a case of one in 37. Now, what almost invariably happens is you get more observations, those impact possibilities go away, because ultimately the probability of impact is either zero or one. Usually it's zero, but we could always be unlucky. So the whole idea is to try and find these things before they find us. NASA's aim being to find 90% of the ones larger than one kilometer by the end of the year 2008. We think there are 1,200, 1,500 such objects. We found 700, uh, so we're actually doing quite well on that. Well, I think we're making the effort to track the objects for a couple of reasons. Uh, number one, it's very interesting. It's interesting to understand uh, what the makeup of the solar system is, and it's kind of a, a cosmic Easter egg hunt, if you will. In addition, if you look at the average statistical danger to the Earth in any particular year, it's not negligible. It just happens to come in big chunks. It's kind of uh, all or nothing game. Well, our job at Linear is in fact to search the sky and uh, report all of the objects. It's not really our job to decide what you do if you find one.